Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing great. Uh, in this video, I'm going to give you a quick market update. I'm going to give you a general idea that's what's going on in the market. And also, if you want to stay up to date regarding Toronto real estate, then please give me a like, share and subscribe. This will really help my channel too. So now let's get right into it. First, let's talk about interest rates. As we all know, Bank of Canada's main focus right now is to curb inflation and bring it back down to 2%. So I think they're going to keep the interest rates where they are and they might start to bring back down in the second half of 2023. Bank of Canada has been very vocal about the past learnings they had that if you start bringing down the interest rates soon, then the inflation might kick back in. Secondly, if you look at the overall composition of mortgages, now 70% of the mortgages right now are fixed at 3% rate. So we'll have to see an impact as each year more people will have to renew mortgages at a higher interest rate. Just to be clear, not all 70% of the mortgages are going to get renewed all at once. So, but we'll have to keep a close eye onto this. On the flip side, there are factors which will offset the impact of high interest rate. First is immigration. As we all know, government has aggressive plans regarding immigration. Uh, Canada plans to welcome about half a million permanent residents each year starting from 2023 to 2025. So this has already started to show its effects. Uh, if you look at the chart of GTA, we are used to welcoming about 100,000 people each year, but this has jumped up to 160,000 for the last 12 months. So this is a 60% increase and we are not counting international students or people who are coming with work permits. So this is definitely going to have an impact on the housing market. It might not happen right away uh, because new immigrants tend to rent first for the first couple of years and then enter the housing market. The other factor is low level of inventory. So the listings in November were down by 12% year over year. So this goes to show that the sellers are holding back. They're not selling unless they really have to sell. So the supply and demand are moving in the same direction, hence creating an equilibrium. Second is price stability. So we've started to see some stability in the prices and I'll quickly show you the chart for our better understanding. As you can see from the peak of February 2022, prices have dropped by about 20% and now we have started to find a baseline over here and prices have started to stabilize. In fact, the prices have increased by 1% from the August of 2022. In my opinion, if the level of inventory continues to remain low, and if the interest rates level off in the first quarter of 2023, I think there will be less downward pressure on the prices. By all means, I'm not trying to say that the prices are going to go up drastically from here. I don't mean to say that, but I think so the prices are going to hover along around this price point, at least until the first half of 2023. Uh, so we'll have to see how that plays out. If you look at the chart on the right side, the prices usually tend to hover along and grow ar along this trend line. So if you see in 2017, there was a mini bubble. This is where the uh, federal government intervened and they introduced fair housing plan and the prices dropped by about 20%. Similarly, if you see in uh, peak of February this year, the prices did go off the chart from the usual trend line. And this is where again, Bank of Canada came in and introduced multiple interest rate hikes and the prices have come down about 20, 25%. So I think the prices are going to hover along around this price point. We can see that they have found a baseline but we see how it plays down the line. So third is what type of market we are actually in? Are we in buyer's market, seller's market, or is it a balanced market? So the type of market is determined by months of inventory. Months of inventory basically means the absorption rate. For example, if you're setting on two months of inventory, and this basically means if there are no more house or no more listing is listed onto the market for another two months period, then there will be no property available for sale after two months because all will be absorbed within two months of time frame. In Greater Toronto area, if the month of inventory is zero to three months, it is a seller's market. If it's between four to six months, then it's called balance market. And if you're setting on months of inventory more than six months, then it is buyer's market. So let's run the numbers together and find out what type of market we are actually in. If you look at the market watch of November 2022, these are basically the numbers released by Toronto Real Estate Board. So month of inventory is basically determined by dividing active listings by the number of sales that month. So if you look over here, so active listings are sitting at 11,910 and the sales in the month of November 2022, we are sitting at 45.44. If we divide active listings by sales, it turns out to be 2.6 months of inventory. Okay, so fundamentally, yes, we are in a seller's market. I totally agree that it doesn't feel like at all and it feels like we are in buyer's market. The one of the reason is that buyers are sending in offers at a discount price. And on the other hand, the sellers are not willing to let go of the property at a discount price. So it's a bit of a cash 22 situation out there. Okay, lastly, let's talk about the rental market. So we definitely saw a crazy run up in the rentals in the summer of 2022. The primary factors were interest rate, 
uh, immigration had opened up on full swing and schools and offices were opening up. So the combination of all these factors was driving the rental market. Uh, we, we were seeing multiple offer situation almost on each and every unit. Uh, so that has definitely simmered down. By that, I don't mean the prices have come down, but we've definitely seen in the reduction of multiple offer situation, which is a good thing for renters. So, so the one bedroom in the city of Toronto are going for about $2,300 and up, and one plus 10 are going for about $2,500 and up, and two bedrooms are going for about $3,000 and up. So that's pretty much. I hope you found this video valuable, and please feel free to reach out to me anytime by clicking on the link mentioned in the description below. And I hope you are having a great holiday season with your friends and family and wish you a very, very happy new year. Thank you and talk to you soon.